Welcome. We're glad to have you with us this morning for our October Seniors Living Smarter Seminar, Moving Forward Gracefully. I know there's some people still wondering about that topic, but bear with us. You will come to appreciate it by uh, the end of our seminar today. Uh, I am Virginia Lacenby. I'm a certified senior downsizing coach and realtor. Uh, with Keller Williams Realty, and I am the founder and host of these monthly seminars. We started the seminars uh, six years ago when in my work with seniors, I just saw the need for seniors and their families to really have information so they could make informed decisions about their lifestyle. Often, where am I going to live? How? What, what's important to me is I journey through this phase of our lives. Um, so we started the seminars. As I say, this is our sixth year. We were live <laughs> seminars until the pandemic. So last April, a year ago, we moved to Zoom and uh, we've continued to have the monthly seminars. It, it's been a, you know, just a whole point of importance of educating equipping and inspiring seniors to make informed decisions, empowered choices, and so on. Over this time, we really formed a neat community of people. Of course, when we met live monthly, it was a little bit easier to form this community because we were together. And I love listening to the conversations before and after seminars and, and to watch as people built on information from each other. It was just an exciting time. I'm glad we've been able to continue with our virtual seminars, our webinars. Uh, we look forward to going live, we hope, in January is our plan that we will return to First Presbyterian where we've been meeting. In fact, I'm curious to see, oh, before, um, well, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. I'm curious to see, we should have close to 40 people with us today, 40 computers with us, more people than that. And some are still joining. Um, but Jeff has a poll for us. And so I'd like for us to go ahead and do that poll. We'll get you involved as attendees here. So have you attended past seminars? I know that uh, we have uh, some new people with us today as I've looked over the registration and that's great. We always welcome new people. How many of you have attended? Zoom was your only way you have attended. You started attending then. If you attended at First Presbyterian um, Aaron, and then if you've attended both Zoom and um, the live seminars. So we'll kind of see what we come up here. Still having people check in. Um, okay, so I guess actually now that I think about the questions, if you're here today, you, <laughs> you had to have at least been with Zoom and maybe at First Presbyterian, but we'll fit that reason. Some people may be a little confused about two options there. Uh, but we see, so we've gained new people this year. Part of that, we always gain new people and that's great, but I will acknowledge and uh, one of the silver linings of COVID and Zoom, which can drive us crazy sometimes, but is that we've been able to reach out to people who were not able to come to our live seminars because of mobility issues or caregiving issues. So we're glad to have, have you with us. When we go live, we will not be broadcasting live, but we will be recording the seminars and have them on their website uh, as we do now. So you will still have the resource available to you uh, when we are able to, to go live. Um, I want to give a special shout out and thanks to two people today. And let's see here, I'm not sure what screens are being shown. That maybe. Okay, so we're glad to see that it's interesting, you know, we'll save those statistics so we kind of know how people have joined us. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brielle Gard, who is an administrative assistant for my real estate business and my Seniors Living Smarter Services, which is a downsizing business. Uh, 
Brielle works hard to keep us all organized. Many of you get emails from Brielle as the admin at Seniors Living Smarter Services. She's our troubleshooter for uh, Zoom calls and many other ways. So you'll be hearing from uh, Brielle later on as she shares some resources with you. Also, um, the person you don't see, usually sometimes he makes an appearance, um, <laughs> is Jeff Cramp. Jeff and I have worked together for over 10 years um, in marketing uh, for my website development and just supporting my business through the marketing aspects. And by default, he became our Zoom tech person. So a big thank you to Jeff for keeping us going with Zoom and for his patience as we work through all of this together. But these two people are just key to the success of the seminars or webinars now. Um, another group of people that are important, and I want to acknowledge our sponsors. Uh, it takes support to be able to offer um, these webinars. And different months, we highlight different ones. You'll be hearing from one of our sponsors today briefly. Um, and when we are live, it's a little bit easier for you to interact with them, but we share valuable information from our sponsors. Um, the sponsors are Silver Key Benefits, you'll be hearing from today. Vera Bank with their estate planning and, and just their commitment to seniors. Visiting Angels, we've often had uh, Stacey Scarborough here with Visiting Angels and the importance that they can help us to maintain our often living in our homes or even in communities where we need a little more assistance. Wesleyan Homes, so you'll be hearing uh, a little bit about activities there today too. Wesleyan, of course, has independent assisted um, in memory care, uh, also home care, home health care and hospice. They offer the whole wide range and a real mainstay in the community. We appreciate the support of Wesleyan Homes. Seniors Living Smarter Services is my business. It's a comprehensive downsizing so that we're able to support you throughout the whole process of move management, liquidation, property prep, and then connects with my real estate business. We all want to educate seniors and here to support. And so we uh, appreciate these businesses supporting us. And uh, I wanna turn now to Howard Polanski with Silver Key Benefits, who wants to, is gonna share with us some key information about Medicare. October is always a critical month with making changes and so on. So uh, Howard's gonna highlight that for us now. Howard? Yeah, thank you, Virginia. So my name is Howard Polanski. I am with Silver Key Benefits. We do all things retirement, uh, whether it is how to create a monthly, consistent monthly income stream with the retirement assets that you have, how do I take care of long-term care? But I'm going to focus on Medicare because that's usually the big question. And more importantly, the Medicare open season starts tomorrow. The, and so it always goes from October 15th to December 7th. So it officially begins tomorrow. And thankfully, from a federal level, there's not that many changes this year. In fact, in the people that I, you know, look at my mentors and experts, I said, what's the big changes? They said, none. And I was like, really? Nothing? They're like, no, none. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Um, now, there are some things on the local level. I'll touch on them real quick, just, you know, as with the couple minutes that we have. But let me step back a second. Um, some people may say, they just ask in terms of, well, what exactly do you do? What's a fee for your service? All of that. There is no fee for our services. Okay. We are compensated by the insurance companies. My goal is to find the proper plan for you because there is no one perfect plan for everyone. We are brokers. So what that means is that we don't represent just United Healthcare or just Humana or just Aetna. We represent all of the major carriers that are in the central Texas area and actually th through most of Texas. Um, and so we're here to find the plan that best fits you. Uh, I will be doing some live speaking events 
uh, I, actually about 17 of them uh, during this Medicare season. The one that I know that is open to the public versus just specific communities is at Faith Lutheran Church. Uh, for since most of the community is probably in the Georgetown area. Uh, I will be there November 2nd at 10 a.m. with Steve Dakovic, my business partner. Um, but just to actually talk about a couple of the other key things that are happening, since I think I've got about 90 seconds left, um, Social Security is going up. I don't know if people saw the press release yesterday, your social security benefit is going to be going up 5.9%. So let's just call it a nice 6% to make it a nice round even number. In the news articles that I was seeing, they are anticipating the Part B premium is going to go up 6.7%. To put that into numbers, right now your Part B premium for 93% of the individuals on Medicare is $148.50 a month. Expect that to go up to 160 ish If you have a Plan G supplement, your annual deductible this year was $203. I'm anticipating that's now going to be $215 to $220 for next year. Again, they haven't officially said it, just to kind of put you in the uh, mind frame. What they have brought out and stated publicly in press releases is the drug deductible. Because you have medical, you have drugs, and they are two different entities. The drug deductible for this year was $445, meaning you've got to pay the first $445 of your medication before the drug plan starts to cover a percentage of that. Next year it will be $480. Okay, so just to start planning for the budgeting of all of this. Um, do I still have about 30 seconds left or am I okay. over my time? All right, we'll let you. Okay. So three, three last things. Number one, there is a drug plan that there are a number of my clients that are on. If they do not change, that drug plan is being absorbed into another one in that company. Their premium will go up $50 a month if they don't do a thing. So it's always good to at least check the drug plans year after year after year. Number two, that three years ago in 2018, Austin Regional Clinic and United Healthcare got into a huge fight, and the people that lost were the 5,000 seniors on this specific United Healthcare plan. That for the last three months of 2018, they could not see their doctors. Huge divorce. They're reconciling. In 2022, Austin Regional will now be taking United Healthcare plans again. I'm not going to say buyer beware, but obviously things can happen. Uh, final thing is Scott and White Healthcare. You have the hospital, you have the insurance. And the insurance is good for everyone that loves Scott and White. You live by Scott and White, you die by Scott and White. There is another hospital network that is kind of doing the same thing as Scott and White and going toe to toe with them. So I will leave it at that. I'm not saying one plan is better than another or switch everything and switch doctors. Again, it's custom to you and what your specific unique needs are. And I'm here to just navigate and find that for you. Thanks, Howard. You know, I think what you shared, Howard, is so representative of what we want these seminars, webinars to be about. Information sharing, heads up people, and here are resources you can turn to. I really appreciate what Howard said. They are willing, he and Steve are willing to meet with you. We encourage people to meet with them, to have your insurance evaluated, where are the gaps? Uh, it's not a pressured sales, it's information. And I, I think they truly, when he said they look, they wanna find the best plan I've seen that. Uh, my husband and I have met with them and, and I, I see that. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for your uh, sponsorship of the um, seminars. And you are sharing information that Brielle will be sharing with our follow-up. Um, so 
when people go, oh my gosh, those are a lot of numbers or, or statistics or percentages or whatever, but we will have some follow-up information as well as your contact information. The next, if he's doing 17 presentations, um, that's going to be a little busy time. I just want to, I think it's neat. I'm glad you're going to be at Faith Lutheran. I want to sing, uh, single out Faith Lutheran. They do monthly seminars for seniors. John Cotton and I have worked together and, and I've spoken there and we often share resources, but you know, it's another great resource for seniors. So I'm glad that uh, you highlighted that, Howard, and people can follow up with you for more information. Okay, um, so let's move to our topic, moving forward gracefully. Okay, in true confession, that was an improvement from moving on gracefully, which somehow when we brainstorm topics last year, you know, you brainstorm a topic, we'll be brainstorming this coming up between now and mid-November, we'll hope to have topics set for next year. You come up with these great ideas and then time passes and you go, oh, yeah, what, what, what did we mean there? So my team did not like my moving on gracefully. They felt it <clears throat> anyway. So they uh, <clears throat> got it changed to moving forward gracefully. It still has some people confused. But uh, so some of you are wondering, is this going to be a lecture about charm? Are we going to practice walking with a book on our head today so we can move gracefully? Um, I guess you'll have to stay tuned to see. You never know what might happen. Uh, so you can ponder the title. But I do want to say, you know, one of the interesting parts about these seminars is I guess it's the university professor in me that I just love to keep researching topics. And, and so I come up with all these new reading uh, articles and books before a seminar and kind of weed it down to what's, what's really, I think, important to share. Well, I have a new favorite uh, read um, that I'll, I'll be mentioning today and probably for quite some time. But uh, your third act, I think we'll have a slide up in about in a minute, uh, A Guide to Great Retirement by William Cook and, and Grant Fairley. There are lots of self-help books out there for us as we navigate retirement, but I, I just really like the book. And as they talk about the third act, it's, it's like the analogy with a play. It's through three acts to a play, Retirement is our third act. We've come back from an intermission, and now it's this time to pull things together and to embrace this new chapter, this new act of our lives. Um, and the important part, he really gives us the opportunity to uh, reflect, as I said, think about the legacy we're going to be living, leaving, but also how do we continue to live rich, fulfilled lives as we navigate the changes challenges and opportunities. I particularly like this quote, I think healthier in kind of in a very broad sense, but healthier is an attitude that embraces aging well, rather than pretending that we are immune from life's clock, extending our best into the future in all areas of life is good. Ignoring the compensations life offers for those who lose the joys of a young body is to miss out on the opportunities we've been given for each age and stage of life. And I think that is a lot of what I want us to be about today is, you know, embracing where we are and there are new opportunities. We'll integrate the word reimagining ourselves and share some stories about that as we move through this. Um, so today we have our panel of experts to explore these kinds of opportunities uh, for living a rich and fulfilled life. I'm going to ask our panel to briefly introduce themselves and then we're going to come back and learn a lot more about their programs. But I want to, we're going to introduce, have you introduce yourself and then we'll do some discussion before you go more in depth about the programs you represent. So uh, let's start with Barb Larson. Barb, you want to introduce yourself? Thank you. Good morning. I'm Barb Larson. I'm here to talk to you about Senior University Georgetown, which I think is an absolute gem in this community. And it 
We have lots of things that we can share with the folks to help them live life to their fullest. Thanks. And we, it is a unique offering here. So we're, we're glad to have you and learn more about it. We have Kay Cobb with us today. Kay. Good morning. Thank you, Virginia. I'm Kay Cobb. I'm a silver sneakers instructor at the Georgetown Recreation Center and have been doing this for about uh, 11 years. And she is going to also share with us some other opportunities The Georgetown Rec Center has an amazing program for seniors. And I just think it's neat what all they offer. And for those of you, I don't know, but I know I, when I was yeah, finally uh, <clears throat> enrolling, uh, going down to the Rec Center and uh, found out that, you know, okay, this is the fee, which wasn't very much anyway, but oh no, you don't have to pay because it was covered by not a plug for United Healthcare, but that's who we're under. And I now, I, oh yeah, I've seen all those promotional things get involved. So uh, it is fun. And we'll hear more about uh, that and other opportunities. Thank you for being here, Kay. Next one, this is a little bit different offering. So I think this challenged some of us to get a handle on it, but Jennifer, Emmerich, Kate, and you wanna introduce us to your programs. Yeah, you bet. Hi everyone, good to be here, it's a lot of fun. Um, so my name is Jennifer Emmerich, Kate, and I am one of the co-creators of a amightygoodtime.com, which is your one-stop shop website to make it easy to find life enrichment events and activities that are specifically curated for older adults. So it's an online calendar um, promoting events from all across the world for adults 50 and over. Well, that certainly has our curiosity <laughs> about how we're going to learn more about that. But we, we look forward to your sharing more specifics and taking us to that website in uh, just a short time. Michelle Monk. Now, Michelle's is a little bit different. She's from a community and, and one of those people who helps pull all this together for the residents of her community. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Monk. I'm the Life Enrichment Director for the Wesleyan Independent Living and Cottages. I've been with the Wesleyan for almost 14 years. All right. So uh, I like that life enrichment, certainly appropriate for our topic today. We'll be learning more about that. Um, I want to throw out to our panelists. Okay, when we invite you to be on the panel and we said, this is our topic, moving forward gracefully. What came to your mind? You didn't walk away from the offering to be on our panel, so that was good. Uh, moving forward gracefully, who wants to share what came to your mind when you heard this topic? I'll start, uh, Virginia. Um, not only do I teach fitness, but I try to teach health, healthy ways to live. Uh, and I feel like that's what you kind of meant was moving through this uh, latter stages of life in a healthy manner. Um, by being fit, I've seen my, my people have more confidence. And that's another thing, they have a tendency to isolate themselves. This is a very, very soul social group. And I, I just love it because of that. And I think that socialization has created a confidence and a better lifestyle for them to move forward. Absolutely. What a beautiful description of that. Anybody else want to join in? Oh, I, waiting to, there you go. Oh, Jennifer. no, Michelle, feel free to go. I'm sure all we're all going to say great things, maybe along the same lines. But I love, Virginia, I love the term moving you know, or living just life in grace and gracefully. So this is a fun topic for me. But when I think of gracefully doing anything gracefully, it's very much with a sense of presence and flow. You know, when you're not, you're not pushing against the current, but you're going with the flow. And there's a time, I think this third act is really a time in life where you can reflect. It's almost a state of pause and stillness and maybe a little bit of freedom to explore where you didn't really have the time to do it before. So it's it's going with that flow and appreciating maybe the moments and living every moment to the fullest. So I'm, I just love the phrase doing it gracefully. So I appreciate you throwing that word out and associating with the third act, yeah. Okay, thanks. Michelle, you'd wanted to speak a while ago, I think. And... Well, I was just thinking of living life abundantly 
um, in all different ways, mentally, physically, socially, um, and just having the best time of your life at the end, towards the end of your life. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And okay. I'd like to add to that. Um, I agree with what everyone has said so far. I think it's living life to the fullest and doing everything that we can to make our life worthwhile. Uh, we're not waiting to die. We are living until we, we pass to the, uh, the next life. Um, I think that's a big part of it. Kay talked a lot about physical and I think senior university provides a lot of mental creativity, curiosity, challenges. So that's what we're all about. And I think this program is really a great way to present that. Well, I appreciate all of that. I think it is so true. Um, my, my motive, I think, is I work with seniors and, and across the board in so many ways. But I hope that people will continue to be actively engaged and not just withdraw. Uh, and we're going to talk more about that. And uh, so we have to, it's, it is that neat opportunity, freedom to explore. We're going to be hearing some stories about that, I think, in a while, too. Um, so let me, this may be an overlap question, but I think it may go a little bit deeper into it. We talk a lot about having a purpose and staying active. So what do you, why do you think that is so important? Anybody want to tackle that question? Why is purpose and staying active so important to you? And why do you see it as important for people you work with? I think having a reason to get up every day, get up and get moving, um, having so many different benefits of having an active lifestyle, um, and just having purpose, purpose to get up and get out there. Um, we always think use it or lose it, because if you're just sitting around all day, um, you're gonna start to lose it. So getting up, having having a reason to get out of bed and go to a class, have a fun day. And it might even be to go play beanbag baseball, which you're gonna hear more about in just a minute. <laughs> okay, anybody else wanna chime in on that? I find that, um, from a, from a physical standpoint is the more active they are, they create a lot of uh, endorphins that creates, that's the happy gene, I guess you could say. Um, I know in the classes I teach, they start at one o'clock. I usually get there by 1230 and half the class is there talking and socializing. And I, when I got certified for Silver Sneakers, they talked a lot about the importance of socialization. And I, I can see they're very supportive of each other. They're very caring of each other. And I, I just appreciate that a lot. In fact, they're so social, I had to get a whistle in order to start my class. <laughs> they were still talking, but um, I love that. And I try to challenge them not only physically, but mentally. And I, I think that's very important. And, and like Michelle said, it's, it's a use it or lose it. And I've seen so many physical improvements in some of the people that come to my classes, just with some of the resistance training that we do. And it is a safe environment. I, I was in, you know, honesty here, I had just joined Silver Sneakers uh, in August or so, no, July, anyway, went several weeks, really enjoyed it. But um, yeah, then I did get to uh, take time out for COVID and uh, yeah, was on my own quarantine for, did have COVID uh, and getting back into it now. But uh, it's, it's a fun environment. And so we look forward to, um, she's going to tell us more specifically about other programs too. Anything else that anybody wants to add about purpose and why it is so important? Yeah, well, um, I do a lot of research on joy just because I find joy to be one of the greatest experiences. And they actually say that you can't really have true joy without having purpose and meaning, which I think is very interesting. So if we talk about the importance of living life to its fullest, what is that without joy, right? So purpose and meaning is, is such an important component. I love the word joy. Yeah, great. That's great. 
Anyone else? Okay. So now I think this should pique your curiosity about, wow, this sounds great. I'm all motivated. I'm going to live a fulfilled life. Now let's learn more specific about these opportunities. So Barb, enlighten us about how we can continue to challenge ourselves mentally and stay engaged through senior university. Okay, I think I can do this. Oops. All right. I'm here to tell you about Senior University Georgetown. It's a lifelong learning program for people over the age of 50. And we provide lots of opportunities for engaging in education and also for doing volunteer work. Our educational programs consist of classes, lectures, and travel. Our fall term that we're going through right now is six weeks in length. It began September 27th and goes through November 6th. We are offering 18 courses. Four of those are in person and 14 are in Zoom. And our Zoom classes are also on demand so people can watch them at any time that they want. An example of some of our classes this fall are the War to End All Wars, World War I. We have a class in personal stress management and I think a lot of us could take that, and I'm included and in, include myself in that. Contemporary Judaism in America, biographical writing, telling your story and getting different ways of being able to do that in different techniques, and that's an interactive class. And then we have a class on modern artists. It's um, art appreciation and art history kind of rolled into one class, and we have excellent instructors. Our next six week term is going to begin on January 24th, going through March 5th. We are going to try to have more in-person classes like everyone else, but we will continue to have some Zoom courses and we hope that everything will be on demand. I have to tell you, Zoom got us through the pandemic. It allowed us to get a, have a reason to get up and to do things and to learn and a little bit of social interaction also. So we do want to continue that. Our class locations for our in-person classes are the First Presbyterian Church and the Georgetown Library right now. In the past, we have had First Baptist Church, Southwestern University, Sun City, and even the Delaney at Georgetown Village. We also have a summer session. It was on Zoom for the last two summers. We met five mornings during the first week of June, and each morning there were 10 classes. I mean, I'm sorry, two classes for a total of 10 classes. And we hope to get back live doing that. Just to give you an example of some of our summer classes, last summer we had climate change in Texas, hidden histories of Georgetown, biosecurity 101, and about seven other classes along that line. I have to tell you, our instructors are volunteers. So our subjects are pretty much mandated by what they like to teach. Some of them teach things about um, their, their professional careers. Some talk about their hobbies. Others just love to share their passion with whatever interests them. I will tell you, we had one instructor in Anthony Triola. I met when I was on another panel discussion for the chamber and he was in the military and he was a Russian intelligence person. He loves to talk about Russia. He speaks it, reads it. I think he probably dreams in it in Russian, but that he came to us and it was just wonderful to have him share his interest with us. And he is one of our favorite instructors right now. So all of our instructors are volunteers. We also have volunteer opportunities for our members is such as we've done the Red Poppy Festival, we've done Marketplace Days, we have booths there, we need help producing our classes, and we also need help in the office. So there are lots of opportunities for people. We also travel. We have gone to Chicago on weekend trips. We have also hit New York City, Washington, D.C., and those are fun-filled, social, and filled with a lot of activities. We had a class on the Santa Fe Trail a few years ago, and a busload of us got to take a trip along the trail and learned all about some of the places that 
were important to the development of the West. And we actually got to stand in the fields and some of the old buildings that everyone part was doing. And that was really in informative and fun. We do have another trip coming up next month. We're just getting back into the, the trips again. We are going to visit Cajun country in Louisiana. We've had a class about the Cajuns, how they ended up there, their culture, and we are going to live it from November 9th through the 14th. We are a membership organization. Our annual dues are $50. That's from the time you register and it's a full 12 months afterwards. So you um, can join anytime. Our courses are $70 for our six week term and our summer classes are $50. And when you break that down, that can be taking one class or all 18 or all 10 in the summer. So it really works out too. It's, it's quite the deal. And our motto is to never stop learning. You can join Senior University. It keeps your mind active, stimulates your curiosity and provides you with social interaction. And I will also tell you having Zoom has allowed members in Georgetown to see members in their family across the country who have joined us in our Zoom classes. And it is, we've had people join us from California and Connecticut and many points in between. So I want to thank, thank you for allowing me to share this gem of senior university with everyone. I love it and it is just great. Thank you, Barb. And you know, I, I'm sure a number of our attendees today have at one time or another participated in the offerings of senior university others of you probably it's on that i'm going to do list well i think maybe after today we're going to challenge people you know to move off from going to take steps and enroll check out the classes and see so again you'll have we'll have follow in our follow-up materials you will have more information about senior university and barb is always glad to visit with people about the opportunities there so so that is great thanks so much and barb's conclusion was a great introduction for our next uh presenter uh jennifer emmerich Caton with a mighty good time as she talked about the Zoom, you no know, silver linings of the pandemic and Zoom and moving us to virtual and, and the opportunities, positive, to connect broader audiences. So Jennifer, take it away on how mighty good time encourages that. Yeah, well, that, it's so interesting. It is a lot of lifelong learning classes on our website. So the problem is, it's very difficult to find stuff like this without searching through a million different websites. And there's so many incredible pro programs like Barb's, like Senior University out there that provide life enrichment for the 50 plus population, right? I mean, there's hundreds. So we're talking social events, creative events, entertaining, lifelong learning. So the thought was, okay, how do we make this really simple for people to find it? So we built this website, amightygoodtime.com. And it is the one-stop shop place where you can find virtual phone-based events, in-person events across the board of a variety of categories that are offered by these incredible programs like Barb's across the world. So I'll certainly navigate you guys through the website a little bit, but um, the main goal was to just make it as easy as possible because everybody should have easy access to life enrichment, you know, no matter what age. But there is a lot of programming out there specifically for the 50 plus, and those are the ones that are most challenging to find. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I can actually pull up this site with you guys. Let me walk you through it a little. All right, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Right. So this is a mightygoodtime.com. Um, this is going to be the homepage. I just want to make sure everyone knows you're on the right side if this is what it looks like. Uh, this is the home page. The first thing you're going to see is the search. So you can search for classes and events and activities across the world based on location. So it, it's near, um, whether it's online or by phone. Um, accessibility was a big thing for us. There's a lot of people who can't get out and about, you know, especially during the time of COVID, but for other reasons as well. And so we, we felt that shouldn't be a barrier. 
um, to experiencing life enrichment. And there's a lot of programs out there that are being offered online, like Barb was saying, they transition to online, as well as by phone. So we wanted this to be a place where anybody can go and find these opportunities. Um, there is a variety of categories. Uh, I mean, you know, support groups, even information about employment, fundraiser, um, comedy, um, advocacy, wellness, you name it. So there's a variety, there's something for everybody. If you scroll down the page, you're going to see some upcoming highlighted events. We've got um, exercise classes, um, social classes, um, music support. So if you were to click the search bar, it's going to take you to the main search page. And the goal here was just to make it very simple. You can have more options for narrowing down what you're looking for exactly. You can do by price. Um, you can look for accessibility features specifically. And I mean, we're just gonna scroll through here. So I'll just give you kind of an overview of some of the stuff we have, but we've got stuff from all across Go the world. Go down just a tad so we can see some of them. I know you've got a lot, but just so yeah. we can see some just, of them. Yeah, anyway, just okay. you want me to just pick one? Okay, that's fine. Oh, sure. So, I mean, you know, we've got University of Texas El Paso <laughs> Lifelong Learning. Here's a book club, for example. So it's got all the information about the price. It's got all the information about the organizer, how to attend. Um, so you have the option, you know, you can reach out and learn more about them on the website, but you can also find everything listed here as well. Now, say for example, you really love this class and you wanted to add it to your favorites. That way it's gonna be saved in your account. So you can always find the information. If you wanna share it with your friends, you can do that as well. Um, so if you, you know, are looking for fitness classes, for example, um, we love aging is cool. So you're going to find a lot of aging is cool stuff on here, um, but fitness, um, story cafe, for example, here's one that's by phone. So the, the intent is to make it very easy to live your third act in complete fullness, whatever you're looking for, any type of accessibility, um, and, and we are new, so we were burst um, after COVID because we realized even during that time, it was very challenging to find events and activities, which is why a lot of the programming right now is virtual um, and by phone. So over the next, well, we're hoping more in-person events will be added, but these organizers are from anywhere. So it's free to post your events. It's free to use the website. It's just, um, we, we wanna help people really find opportunities to explore, to have new adventures, to you know learn. Like Barb was saying, life and lifelong learning is a big one on our website. Yeah. You know, one of the things that comes to my mind, Jennifer, is you know the opportunities, you know, with friends across the country, we could sign up for a class together, yoga together, and be watching and you know I'm here, but my friends in Louisville are over in Tyler, and we can do things together. So, you know, the world is changing. In fact, one of our webinars next year is probably going to be about technology and different aspects, but this, this is a, a neat use of that. She mentioned aging is cool. In fact, that's how I came to uh, connect with Jennifer. Uh, aging is cool is actually based in Kyle Arbuta, South of Austin, and they do a lot in the area. I think Michelle may be mentioning them too. Uh, some of you who attended Vibrant Living, um, when we got to have our first Vibrant Living, uh, Aging is Cool was there, and that whole live life abundantly, as Westland likes to say, but joy, is, as Jennifer stresses, and then it's spoken with Amy, who's with Aging is Cool. She connected me with Jennifer, so you know, it's well, Amy is the Amy with Aging School is, cool, is the co-creator of a mighty good time. Okay. So yeah, my good, so she's very involved in this, and that's you know the brainchild. She understands the world of this because she's been you know Aging School cool, has been working with older adults for a long time. So I heard them at a love senior, project, a senior networking event several years ago, and just that our attitude towards aging, you know, and. Half, half empty, half full, you know, those whole kinds of things. So staying, staying engaged that way. So thank you for, for sharing that. Thank you. I just wanted us to continue after Barb, but SAR is kind of on that virtual and the opportunities that way to, to pick up with Jennifer. 
Now I want to go to Kay, and she's going to motivate us more. She's already given us a teaser with, with what all she does with Silver Sneakers and how she also integrates health and nutrition into that. But Kay, tell us more about both Silver Sneakers, but also about other programs. Eh? At the rec center, there's some exciting adventure or extreme or from kayaking to all kinds of things going on there. They do have a very active senior uh, group there. Um, Robert Staten would be the contact person if you wanted to know. They do adult day trips. Uh, there is senior Tai Chi, which is excellent for balance, flexibility, mobility. Um, there's a bridge group that meets every Wednesday. And if you're interested in just socializing, they have donut happy hour on Thursdays. You can go and have a donut and visit. Uh, there is uh, dance lessons, ballroom dance lessons, uh, country Western dance lessons. If you're interested in the rec center at all, just go to the front desk and say, could I look at your facilities? And one of the staff members will take you on a tour. There's an upstairs uh, indoor walking track. There's a, a wonderful weight room. Uh, that you can get, a, like Virginia mentioned earlier, you can get an orientation for the weight room. They do it once a month and find out and maybe meet some of the personal trainers if you're interested in that. There is a granny basketball team that plays and there's also a um, senior men's basketball team and they just actually went to a big tournament recently in San Antonio, which and, and they're a lot of fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. I teach the Silver Sneakers classes. Silver Sneakers is a national organization of senior fitness. There's 15,000 senior, senior Silver locations around the country. Um, some of the Medicare Advantage plans will provide you with a Silver Sneakers card, which allows you to take the classes and use the rec center. And I know Humana is one of them. Uh, Virginia mentioned United Healthcare. And you also have access to online classes and which are great. And they'll send you an email and say, there's a class today at a certain time and you can go online. I teach what's called Silver Sneakers Classic. It um, incorporates resistance training with weights and a band. I work a lot on balance. When I get new people to my class, I introduce myself. And the first thing they say to me is, I have terrible balance and that's not unusual for older people. So I work a lot on balance. Uh, we use a ball, I do some cardio. I try to challenge them, not only physically, but mentally. So I may change up routines and make them think, oh, oh wait, I'm supposed to go to the right. This, you know, and that Believe type of thing. me, she does that. <laughs> um, it's one of those things, uh, if you don't think about it, you do better. But then when I know I'm supposed to be this direction. Exactly. <laughs> I try to work with them mentally. I also teach um, Silver Sneakers yoga on Thursdays and all the Silver Sneakers classes have a chair. So if you can't feel like you're getting a little winded, you can sit in a chair, you can march your feet in place, you can move your arms and still get a good workout. With the Silver Sneakers yoga, we start seated. I work a lot with shoulders, hips, uh, the spine, uh, we'll stand. I work with balance, um, but it's a, I try to incorporate a lot of the mind, the body, and the spirit. Uh, we do meditation at the end, uh, a lot of focus on the breath. There is Silver Sneaker Splash. You're in the pool with a paddleboard, another great way to work without maybe uh, working on a hard surfaces too jarring on your joints. That's a great way to work in the pool. Um, there's, uh, I mentioned a lot of the programs that the rec center offers. If you don't have a uh, silver sneakers card through your, uh, through your insurance, a membership at the rec center is very reasonable. For a senior, it's like $10 a month. And you'll have access to everything that there is. There's two racquetball courts, the weight room. Uh, there's a multi-purpose room where there's some classes. Uh, the, there's all the activities that you would want. Uh, there's a great indoor swimming pool that is just wonderful. You can go and take classes there. Uh, there's pickleball. 
there's quite an active group of uh, people that play pickleball. Um, and I just think the rec center, I joined the rec center in 1996 and it was like a third of what we have now. And there was this one little workout room and you had to stand in line. And now there's this wonderful big facility that I feel like is the crown and the jewel or a jewel in the crown of Georgetown with the pool and everything. And there's pools all around the city too that are part of the rec center. But if you're interested in any of these, um, just talk to Robert Staten or talk to any of the, the front desk people. They're very, very helpful. And it's just a great group of people that I teach. I just love them. They're very caring. And I think that's part of when we get older, we have a tendency to kind of isolate ourselves thinking, I can't do that. I can't go there. They're, these people care about you. Um, we've had people who have lost a spouse. They'll send a card. Uh, they'll have everybody sign the card. There's somebody that maybe is ill. I have people that come to my classes. I have one lady that just turned 88. I don't know if it's mine or... I'm sorry? And I have uh, two or three people with Parkinson's. Yeah. Okay. And so it's just a wonderful group of people and the rec center is just a great place to go and work out. Thank you, Kay. You have us motivated for that. All of our speakers have us all ready to go. Now, I know that a lot of our attendees are from Sun City, and you've got a great fitness center there and so on. And so uh, we wanted to highlight the rec center because that is available to all the citizens of Georgetown as, you know, all of our programs. So we think that that's really important. Thank you um, for sharing that with us, uh, Kay. All right, now we're going to, as I said earlier, switch gears a little bit, and um, I'll just let Michelle explain how we're switching gears or showing more implications or uses of some of these kinds of opportunities. Michelle? Hi. So the Wesleyan offers a continuum of care between independent living, assisted living, skilled nursing, home health and hospice, memory and memory care. And I'm going to be talking about independent living. So at independent living, we have about 300 residents. That also includes that we have 22 cottages also. And we offer a full activity calendar every day with you could be busy from morning till till night at the Wesleyan. We look for ways to help our residents to nourish themselves every day, both physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually. So I'm gonna start with physically. So we have about 25 classes a week of exercise classes. We have strength, we have aerobics, we have balance classes. We have a class called RAP, which is reduce arthritis pain, where we kind of work on working on those joints we have a class called Stronger for Longer, which is for people that have some kind of mobility issues. Um, our water aerobics program, we have water aerobics, we have an outdoor heated pool. So we have water aerobics, we have water yoga, we have water strength classes. We have a huge outdoor door walking trail that has stations along it that you can exercise on also, and it connects our whole community. We have a putting green, and we also do a lot like what Kay was saying. We also work you mentally. Also, we have um, different mental classes like train the brain, which is super challenging. I always just say, just try, just try, try, try. And um, a couple of years ago, we were actually awarded by Leading Age Texas, the innovative program of the year. So we really believe in combining all of these different programs. So that was physically. So now let's talk a little about mentally. So we have speakers all the time out here. I actually use quite a few of the speakers from Senior University. I'll contact them and say, you wanna give a little short class here at one time and practice what you're gonna be speaking on. And oftentimes they come out here and, and do a talk for us also. We have everyone from, we had Chet Garner, the day tripper out here the other day doing a talk. 
We had a celebrity chef come in um, from the Food Network. Jet Tila was here teaching a cooking class. And, and again, just fascinating lectures from people all around Texas. We have language classes, tons of games. If there's any game, we're gonna have it. And if we don't have it, just tell me and I'll make us have it. Um, computer classes, we have a new group that just started called the Google Group where they get together and work on technology. And then socially, um, oftentimes I, I heard someone say, you know, you get lonely when you're at home all day. And so to just be out there with other people is so much fun. Oftentimes our lunch goes on for an hour, hour and a half, and it's because it's just such a big social time over here for everybody. Um, I like to think of things that interact together, like say you're out on the putting green putting, but you're also being social and you're being physical. So you're, you're combining it all into one. And then all kinds of things that, that people might not have had time to do in the past, um, we offer them again now, like art classes, reader's theater, choir, book clubs. We have a men's club. We have the WOW group, which is Women of Wesleyan group who meet monthly. And as Virginia mentioned earlier, we have an amazing beanbag baseball team. <laughs> we have eight teams now, and we challenge other communities to come play beanbag baseball with us. If you ever played cornhole, beanbag baseball is a lot like cornhole, only a, a little harder. And um, they are very competitive. We have one 104 year old here who gets up and he'll do his beanbag and then he runs. He literally runs the bases. <laughs> he also jumps from airplanes, doesn't he? He does also jump from airplanes. <laughs> Um, and then the last part is spiritually. We are a faith-based organization. We have ministers on all of our campuses and we offer church services, Bible studies, and other ways that residents can discover meaning and a sense of belonging. So, wow, that tired me out just thinking about all the <laughs> activities and the decision-making involved in where I'm going to go and so on. I, I want to highlight that, yes, well, Michelle, hey, we're kind of using um, a Wesleyan in this case as an example of independent living. So she's highlighted the wonderful activities to live a fulfilled life and so on. For those people who think I'm not going to go live with those old people, <laughs> and I mean, and Michelle knows we say this, she has residents there who said that before they moved in, and then they go, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. Now, I did, I'm, I'm not, there are other wonderful independent living communities. Independent living communities offer a wonderful resource for people. So I just encourage people, you know, if you are considering that, what I think is critical to, because of the community, because of the kinds of activities offered in an independent living community, you have to always check out different communities. What do they offer? And there you saw a, a full schedule of activities um, and so that is wonderful. We, we appreciate your sharing that with us. Um, so I want to see if when we think about how this creates new opportunities for people, I think a lot about beanbag baseball and I've heard some people, you know, the, you know and they're just so, so, you know, like, get out of my way. I'm on my way to beanbag baseball. If you are in the building, you, you hear all the excitement is, you know, spectators are cheering them on and so on. And perhaps people who aren't there, you know, are going, I just cannot see myself playing beanbag baseball. I can't see my, you know, it's, sometimes this is a reimagining, a freeing up. Someone had talked about how it's, it gives us time and, and free. I was with one of my real estate clients the other day. We just closed on the sale of her home, took her back to her community in Austin. And uh, yeah, I mentioned this to the earlier group, but uh, she does a lot of fitness and activities, water aerobics in her community, which I wasn't too surprised about. Uh, and then she said, oh, and I started something new. I started line dancing. You know, that was a complete surprise. I would never have imagined that, but it's that opportunity. And, and I it was just bringing out something new in her. Um, before we open this up for questions from the floor, are there any stories you all would like to share about people 
from your programs or activities that you see how they perhaps reimagine themselves in this third act of their lives? Well, I'll start. Yeah, we have a, a great story about the most inspiring woman, 95 year old woman who um, was so active prior to COVID with her community um, locally. She was even, she ran even a dance club. Um, but when COVID happened, she had to move out of state to be with her family. So, you know, huge life transition for her. But she very quickly adapted to Zoom and technology, um, which was so impressive because I still even struggle with Zoom and technology. And she was able to start being with friends again. She got involved in a bunch of fitness classes, was almost like more engaged with a wider variety because she had access to such different types of activities through virtual. So yeah, she, she wrote us the other day saying she just went to, just saw a magic show with an opera singer at the same time on a Zoom. And it, so yeah, stories like that are incredibly inspiring. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? I was going to say, when I was thinking about a third act, I was thinking about the arts. I have so many residents who say, I have not picked up a paintbrush in 50 years, and now they're in art class. Or I have a couple of guys who retired, like military guys, who are now really into our reader's theater. And they play, they audition for every play. And um, just things that you, you know, trying something new, something different. I agree with Michelle. That's, I, I've run into people that come to my classes for the first time and they say, oh, I haven't exercised in such a long time. Said, That's fine. You will start slow and easy and then you go from there. And then I find months go by and they've progressed into some other form of uh, maybe a little higher level than what I teach of exercise. And that really enthuse, enthuse, is enthusiastic for me because I can see that they've told themselves, I can do this. I can, I can go another level. It is, is that the opportunity taking a risk and, and all of this is so, so very important. Uh, I want to open it up now to see if, if our attendees have questions. There may be some specific questions about uh, programs that were highlighted today or just about this whole a comment, a question or comment about moving forward gracefully. So who in our wonderful audience would like to share something with us today? Anybody? Some of you I may call out if you don't volunteer. <laughs> All right. Oh, whoops. Let's see. Do we have any hands up yet, Brielle? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Joanne Cochran, speaking of doing things at a distance, um, in a true disclosure here, uh, Joanne lived in Sun City for a number of years and actually moved to uh, Tyler a few years ago, but she still joins us on this. So, Joanne, you want to unmute yourself so we can hear you? Yes. Good morning. Thanks for all the great information. Um, I am particularly loving what I heard about a mighty good time .com, um, that those classes and events and activities are available anywhere. And I'm in a little community of about 100,000 people here um, in Northeast Texas. And so, um, this is very exciting to me. I'm thrilled. And I thank you, Virginia and Jennifer, for sharing this fabulous information. I'm excited to dive into it. Thanks so much. Well, thanks for sharing that. So there she's going to get a start. At the end, we're going to ask people you don't have to share, but you know, encourage what's going to be your next move. And so she's already got that down. And Jennifer accomplished her goal of uh, sharing her valuable information with people. I thought I saw another hand up, other hands.
One thing I want to pick up on is about the rec center. I think sometimes for seniors, you know, I don't know, I don't, even though there's a big sign there that has senior center on it, you know, some of us are reluctant to go there. I'm not the athlete. I'm not the fitness person, but uh, it's a safe environment and it is wonderful. It is a wonderful offering from the city of Georgetown. So I, you know, be brave and go check it out. And I, I just want to mention that. Any other questions that people might have? Anything else that our panelists have thought of that you want to highlight or share with people? I'd like to add something. I would like to commend all of the people who joined this webinar. Uh, we had a class at Senior University about the digital age and the advancement of all of the digital technologies that are coming out. And we have to remember that people our age are digital immigrants. It's not even our second language. Um, we probably, you know, we all speak English and we may have another foreign language, but can you remember how old you were when you started getting into computer technology and then the cell phones and all of the apps? And I just want to remind people that the more that you work with these, these different devices, the more you are going to be able to stay in touch with everyone. Don't be put off by the electronics. Take the classes, if they're classes at the senior center or through Sun City or other agencies, learn as much as you can about all of these different devices. Because our, you know as well as I do that my grandchildren can run circles around me when it comes to any of the electronic devices. So I, that's who I go to for help. But we, we have to be careful not to slide backwards and become digital dinosaurs in this day and age. So keep, keep out there, keep trying, keep practicing. And I have worked with a lot of people who, when I try to teach them about the Zoom classes that we offer, that um, CEOs of companies and other leaders knew all about their business, but didn't know the first thing about Zoom or PowerPoint presentations or anything, but it was a big accomplishment in their lives when they were able to do a PowerPoint for senior university or get into the Zoom classes. So I just want to thank everyone for, for joining us on this, on this webinar and keep it up. So important. Brielle and I were just having a conversation about that the other day about, you know, as parent, Brielle is the adult child looking at her parents and, you know, how involved are they? Or are we willing to take a risk and learn it? And so, you know, we just, and yeah, so get, get our grandkids to come help us, get introduced to it, tell them to be patient with us. You know, and where was I saw recently, remember, I taught you how to eat with a spoon. So, you know, you can help, you know, spoon feed me uh, through the, Zoom. Okay. Anybody else? Actually, I love that. Barb, that was oh, an anthem. I love it. And I want to tag off of that because there's actually a lot of programs out there and organizations that offer free tech training to older adults. Um, so we've got a, a bunch of those listed on our mightygoodtime.com calendar. Um, one in particular, I'll do a shout out to Senior Planet. And so it's only, you know, all free classes for adults 16 and over. They go at your speed. You, they teach you how to use cell phones, apps, Zoom. So there are, there are, um, there are resources for learning out there too. So yay, Barb. Love it. Love what you said. Thanks, Take Jennifer. the risk and go for it. So that's great. You know, another important part of this, we've talked about physical health. We've talked about uh, mental, we've talked about social interaction, nutrition was implied a little bit. We know that in purpose, one of the big things for having purpose is when we volunteer or serve others. Now, as we plan this, what we did today, we, we opted not to have someone just to speak on that topic, but we, uh, Brielle has helped pull together resources because we know, and well, 
Barb has shout out for our, you know, come volunteer to help at Senior University. And so, um, Brielle, you want to highlight that what we are going to be including with our follow up about volunteer and serving? Of course, yeah. Well, first of all, the panelists today have been fantastic and inspiring. And, and like Virginia said, part of this third act, you know, we're looking at how we can be physically fit, how we can be involved. I love talking about technology and making sure that we're staying up to date on that. Um, and part of this third act is our purpose. And that purpose might be learning and education, and it might be staying physically fit, but volunteering is a really important part of purpose. Um, and so when we look at studies about volunteering, we know that it helps your mental health. It helps you to engage in physical activity. It bridges that uh, generational gap, depending on who you want to volunteer with. Uh, you might really want to sit and read with kids. You might want to be at the animal shelter. Finding what really feeds your soul is so important at any stage of life. And so we're going to be sending out in our follow-up materials to you a couple of different websites where you can find resources and places in Georgetown or anywhere because these are uh, kind of databases where you can go in and put in um, what you're interested in, in volunteering. Or, you know, there's one called volunteermatch.org and we'll send you the link to that. And then also greatnonprofits.org. And so pick your location. Like I know uh, Joanne is on and she's not in Georgetown, but you can still look up um, places in, in your local area where you can find places where the, you can volunteer. Some um, are gonna be where you're gonna be working hand in hand with people. Some might be virtual. Um, there's just so many different opportunities. But when we are volunteering and giving of our time, we actually find that we have more time. Um, and so that's really important for people to fill that space with things that give them purpose. So we're excited to share those resources with you as well. And we appreciate Brielle uh, organizing it for us and the tremendous job she does in pulling together information to share. Uh, it's, it's just been a great blessing to have her come on board our team. Um, so some housekeeping announcements about other future sort of activities. Um, we have, <clears throat> we have an event coming up this Saturday. We're hosting, <laughs> uh, yes, Brielle and I are in, engaging in something neither one of us have done before, but we're going to, we know our seniors, we think, for those people who are downsizing seems to be, you know, uh, an often a word here, uh, but whether or not we're just reorganizing or really looking to, to plan um, uh, for a major move, we want to host a shredding event. And so uh, Brielle, fill us in on the plans for that. So the plan is Saturday morning, we will have that truck there that you see um, in the, the graphic here, we'll have that truck in the parking lot at Keller Williams. Um, in Georgetown, and we're asking that you actually enter off South Main Street. There'll be some signs. Uh, we'll be out there waving to you so you'll know where to enter, um, and we'll be out there from 10 o'clock until 12. Um, it's a drive through event, so we'll help get the boxes out of your car and the paper shredded, and if you want your things back, we can or you take your uh, boxes or bags, whatever you bring your items in, we can get those back to you. Um, and so we'll, we'll be on site. We're excited for people to come in and join us on Saturday morning with your, your shredding. Um, it's up to four boxes. Um, please don't bring any metal. Make sure you don't have any like big clunky clips um, holding your papers together. We don't want to do anything to damage the machine, um, shredding machine in the truck. Staples are okay. Um, they're small enough and they don't damage anything, but just be mindful of big pieces of metal being in with your paper, but we hope that you will come out and join us and, and bring your papers to shred. So I appreciate Brielle organizing that. And we, it really is something that we want to offer as a service. As we know, we often hear, I've got years and years of tax records, or I've got, you know, from our business. So here's an opportunity to uh, get rid of it and in, in a safe, secure way. So we're, we're glad we'll be able to do that. Um, we have in our November uh, seminar will be coming up, 
planning your next steps, another one of those kind of hmm, vague titles, perhaps. But we really want to, as we've talked throughout the year about where are we in our whole process of planning for living a fulfilled life? And of course, a lot of it does focus on what's the best living arrangement for me. So you'll be hearing more about that. It is going to be November 18th. That will be our final seminar for the year because uh, we do not do a, a seminar or webinar in December, but we'll be resuming then in uh, January. So I wanted to highlight those things, but I do want to return to see if anyone else has come up with a question. Are you just so motivated about that you can't wait to go participate in some of these activities you want to get on with it? But I truly hope you will. And I want to give a big, and I'm glad uh, Barb into what she did, a thank you to those who are attending today. I know we've got to overcome the challenges of Zoom, but thank you for braving that. Thank you for giving the time. And I, I hope and I feel it's been a valuable use of, of time for our attendees and lots of opportunities to learn. Now it's your responsibility to follow up. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But a big thank you to our panelists who took time from their busy schedules, not only to be with us today, but we've had a pre-event call where we had did some introductions and getting to know each other and trying out technology before our uh, seminar call itself. So thank you very much, Kay, Michelle, Jennifer, Barb. Um, you all have been a great group today and we really appreciate sharing that and motivating us. So unless we have other questions, what I really want to encourage you, our attendees, you know, to think about, so what are your next moves as you, you know, navigate through the changes, the challenges and the opportunities of our third act? We can either make it a positive time or it can be the, you know, I'm just kind of waiting to the end, but why waste this time? And for some of us, if we'll get busy with some of these activities, we may not even notice some of the aches and pains as much, or maybe we will uh, improve those. So this is a time, but truthfully and genuinely, I encourage you, I hope to hear, we'd love to hear from you uh, about what your next moves have been. So uh, Joanne, when you uh, sign up or get involved with some of the um, mighty good time things, let us know. And the same for others of you, let us know what you venture into, whether or not you go uh, get signed up for senior university offerings this spring, or make an appearance at the rec center and join Silver Sneakers. All of these are great opportunities. Um, so I encourage you to think about that. Anything else I need to highlight? Brielle, anything you can think of? Now I was gonna let you guys know that for uh, when we send the follow-up email, it'll be about a week from now that gives us time to um, get the webinar posted to our blog and all that. There will also be a link in there um, for you to share your thoughts and ideas about I, things that you might want us to do seminars on for 2022. We are in that process right now of starting to curate our plans for next year. And, and we want to know what's important to you. And so we would love your feedback if you would fill out that survey um, when it comes through. And um, again, that the follow-up email will include contact information for all of our panelists today. Um, a link to go back and rewatch this if there's anything that you've missed or you've been so encouraged and inspired you want to share it with your friends. Um, and so be looking for that in about a week from now. Uh, we'll have all the content put together and ready for you to send that out. Absolutely. Along those lines, too, I know a couple of people had emailed me and go, wait a minute, is the seminar this week? Because we usually meet the third Thursday of each month except in October. Uh, in October, we change usually to the second Thursday because I'll be in Oklahoma City next week at a legacy conference that was for certified or senior housing professionals and downsizing coaches. And it's a great group of people. Um, you know, a lot of the people who will be attending do these types of seminars. So it's a fun, we come together and we share. I can't wait next week to, you know, just off this one to share about what a great panel we had today. Um, and we share ideas and 
I always pick up new ideas to bring back, but it's fun to be a part and for me to grow professionally and just to be able to reach out and serve seniors. That's what we really want to be about. And um, seminars are an offshoot, a service part of our business, and we appreciate that. If you have needs for downsizing for real estate, we're here to, to help you with that. Okay. Well, I want to and thank Brielle again very much too. I thank Jeff, even though he's not seen, he's hiding behind the, but trying to keep us going here. Um, thank everybody. And so I hope you have a safe Halloween. I see a lot of us are in orange or black today, getting ready the month of October, good time to do this. And uh, look forward to uh, seeing people in November and hopefully seeing you Saturday at our shredding event. And uh, feel, please feel free to call with questions or if we can help in the area of these resources we were that were shared today or downsizing real estate. That's what we're here for.